Hey you, how's it going? In today's tutorial, you are going to learn how to paint this sweet and elegant lace daisy design on a glass. Now I'm using a wine glass, but this design lends itself to many other projects as well. So grab your supplies and let's get started. I am using DecoArt Americana gloss enamel paints. They are a multi-surface acrylic paint and they are able to be baked on to become permanent with the glass so they won't wash away. Now you do want to clean your glass really well with rubbing alcohol to ensure proper paint adhesion. I picked up this wine glass from the Dollar Tree um, but this design is cool because you can really use any kind of mug or glass that you have and it will work beautifully. Today's design is going to be made of all homemade tools from stuff that you probably already have around your home, like a toothpick, a cotton swab, and some pencils. On one end of the cotton swab, you want to remove all the cotton, and I just smear a little bit of paint down the shaft of the cotton swab just to kind of hold down any fuzzies. And on the other end, where there is cotton, I put paint on that end as well and I just kind of smush down the cotton to make it a little bit flatter on the tip and you do want to use the cotton swabs with the paper stick and not the plastic stick because those just don't work as well. You are also going to want a palette and a damp cloth to clean off your tools with. As for the pencils you just want to make sure that you have good new flat erasers on the top. So we're going to have a total of five different size tools here. We're going to have the toothpick, we're going to have the stick end of the cotton swab, the cotton end of the cotton swab, and then the two different pencil erasers. All right, now starting off with the bottom of our glass, we've got our greens here. One is called leprechaun and one is turf green. I'm going to start with the large pencil eraser and you want to dip the eraser tip all the way into paint. You don't need the paint to go all the way up the tool, but you do want the whole end of the tool to be completely covered and it will ensure a nice round dot. Don't forget to re-dip your tool into paint after each dot. Continue placing dots right next to each other as close as you can. Now, um, I think I had to go back and erase a few and then space them out a little bit just so that they all fit right. And that's okay. You can do that. You know, it's acrylic paint, so it cleans up pretty easily. You just wipe it off with a damp cotton swab or a damp towel and go again. You know, no big deal. Don't make it stressful. This is supposed to be fun and relaxing. All right, moving on to the next color. This is turf green and I'm using the smaller pencil and I'm placing a dot right in between each of the previous row of dots. And here I left this in to show you that you can just wipe the dot away, up and away with a cotton swab. So no big deal. I just kind of get it a little wet and then swirl the paint right up and away and then keep moving on. See, no big deal. It's not perfect, but we're not machines. It's going to be imperfect, and that's perfectly fine because it's absolutely going to be beautiful. <laughs> Keep going. All right, this is switching back to the leprechaun paint now, and I'm using the cotton end of the cotton swab. So our dots are descending in size, and I did try to fit them right in between each of the previous row, but I don't know that they, I think they got a little off track, but again, that's okay. And you actually can clean off the cotton end of your tool. Um, you can just gently pat it on the wet towel and it'll last you. So I knew that I wanted to draw on a guideline of some sort at the bottom of the glass. And so I just found something that was tall enough. I had to kind of play around, but I found two rolls of tape and I just stacked them up and then I used a dry erase marker. And I just spun the glass and it made a nice straight guideline for me. Considering that we're using glass, it can get kind of hard to see where you're going and what you're doing because you're seeing straight through. So I just placed um, some colored paper inside the globe there and that way it provides a nice contrast for your eyes. I'm moving on to a color called bright yellow. And I'm just going to be placing dots all around that ring there go to either side and I'm using the smaller sized pencil and I just try to squeeze on as many as I could fit there and then I'm going to move up to the larger pencil eraser for the next string 
and again just kind of fitting them as close as I can to each other and just try to fit as many as I can get on there and I'm going to do a little bit of a gradient here with the yellow to a deeper yellow so I'm going to mix two colors here the bright yellow and a color called antique gold and I'm just going to mix them up a little bit in my palette and that's the color I'm going to use for the next row and I'm going back to the small pencil eraser and placing a dot right in between the previous row all the way around and then I'm going to try to squeeze in one more row with that same color really pack them in here and then I'm going to darken up that yellow a little bit more with some of the antique gold and then for the last row um, I'm going to be using the cotton end of the cotton swab and just making one more ring I would suggest letting the um, paint dry or at least that top ring of little dots there dry before you take off that dry erase marker uh, but that's just up to you if you want to move forward you can and for the petals I'm going with just straight white paint and the larger pencil is going to be the base and I'm going to make six dots going around the glass here so so just start anywhere and then you can kind of see through the glass and see that you want to make one dot opposite of the first dot and then two in between each of those you know dots so on each half so go ahead and make two just kind of um, space them about five or so dots apart four or five dots apart and if your spacing is off a little bit don't be too hard on yourself just remember you can remove that dot and move it over a little bit now we're going to be starting our petals and I like to call this a little bridge it's going to go right around that large dot what you want to do is grab your toothpick dip it in paint make your first initial dot in the center of the outer edge there and dot continuously all the way down to the base of one side then you will re-dip it again re-dot that first initial dot and dot all the way down the other side hugging that large white dot and dot all the way to the base of the other side and that's the start of our petals you're going to go ahead and do that to all six of the larger white dots For the next row of dots for our petal, you're going to start with the stick end of the cotton swab and make one dot right in the center of the outer edge there, right above that previous bridge. And then you're going to follow that up by going back to the toothpick and you're going to dip it in paint and then you're going to try to get as close as you can to the previous bridge and that larger white dot there that you've just made and dot all the way down one side and then redip your tool and then do the same thing to the other side so it's going to start really looking like a petal here you can really start to see that shape happening and then we go up again so the first initial dot is going to be even larger and that's made with the cotton end of the cotton swab followed by a dot to either side of that with the stick of the cotton swab and then again going back with the toothpick and dotting all the way down as close as you can hug to either side sorry if you hear my little chihuahua Pablo snoring under the table at my feet <laughs> he's always there and it's raining outside and I can hear the cars driving by so if you hear all that you just have to excuse the background noise we went a little bigger still with the pencil as the first initial dot followed up by the cotton swab and then the stick and we're going to do two with the stick and then dot all the way down with the toothpick each of the six petals and that time we're using the cotton end and making two dots going down you know feel free to experiment and play around and practice a little bit maybe on some cardboard next to you and just see you know you may want to change something up or you may you know need a little bit more practice but you know feel free to make it your own as well you could even change up the colors you could make this a sunflower instead of a daisy just whatever you would like but check this out 
Doesn't that look beautiful and elegant? It looks just like lace. I love taking that paper out and checking it out. And then, of course, got to stick it back in and finish up this painting. So we're going to do a whole nother row of petals. So right in between each of the petals, we're going to copy that same pattern as we did before with the previous set of petals. So now we're going to have a double set of petals. So it'll be another six. Filling in that space a little bit. And I didn't want to go too high up to the rim because I don't want to have paint where the lip will go. Um, that's just a precaution that I like to take when using any kind of paint, even if it's non-toxic. I just think that that would be the best practice. So I do like to keep about an inch down from the top of the rim. Feel free to slow this video down or pause it at any point. I'm just showing what I've already shown. So I just left it sped up a little bit. I know you can't paint that fast. I can't paint that fast. <laughs> One of my favorite questions that gets asked in my mandala sharing group on Facebook is, where are you from? I am from a city called Cincinnati in the great state of Ohio and the United States. So I'm going to ask for you, whoever you are, wherever you're watching from, leave me a comment in the comment section below and let me know where in the world are you? Where are you watching this video from? All right, now I did let this dry before I moved on with the stem um, because I knew I had to handle it up on the globe area. And going with the leprechaun green and the um, cotton swab stick, I'm going to make another ring with the leprechaun green and then another ring with the turf green. Just kind of filling in up that little Part of the stem there and then I'm going to switch over to the toothpick and I'm going to make some random dots you can make them in a straight line you can zigzag them up and down and however you want to do it and I just fill it in towards the bottom and then make them more you know spread out and have less of them as they get to the center of the stem and I do the same from the top going down so and it looks really super cool uh, when it's all done and dry. It looks like bubbles or something like that. It's very cool because you can see through, you can see to the other side, you can see the dots. It's just very cool, very cool effect. So definitely give that a shot. Let me know how it goes. I love when you share your work with me. Now check this out. Ooh, take that paper out and look at that beautiful lace daisy. I love this project so much. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Imagine giving that as a gift to someone. I'm sure they would absolutely love it. Now throw this in the oven for, okay, don't throw it. Place it in the oven, in a cool oven, and you want to bake it at 325 degrees for 30 minutes, and then you're also going to cool it down in the oven with the door partially open. Now that is the directions for this particular paint brand so you have to double check with your paint brand to make sure it's the same i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you're new to my channel i would love to have you as a subscriber thank you so much for watching and i'll see you real soon bye now